Today, we are facing some of the biggest challenges in human history. The population is growing, industries are increasing, degradation of natural resources are spreading, and the climate is changing. Our modern lifestyle is causing global warming. According to the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change, IPCC, we are predicted to have higher temperatures, sea level rise, more extreme weather events and different weather patterns in the near future. These changes will affect vital areas of our lives, one of the most vulnerable being food production, where food needs are projected to double by 2050 in order to feed a growing population. In India, the stakes are high. With over 60% of the country's land being used for agriculture, adaptation to climate change must be done in a sustainable way. Today's conventional agricultural methods have been hazardous to the environment and the human health. As a reaction, initiatives for small-scale organic agriculture is on the rise in India and worldwide. One of these are the Deccan Development Society, DDS, operating in the state of Telangana in central India. Their main objective is to promote organic agriculture, focusing on revival of the traditional crop millets. DDS is also the founder of Millet Network of India, MINI, a broad network of organizations supporting millet farmers across India. And who are we? We are Kaisam and Caroline, two interns from the Swedish NGO The Swallows, spending four months with the Deccan Development Society. The work of DDS inspired us to explore how the agricultural sector will be affected in the future. So, the past months we've been traveling around India, from Telangana to Andhra Pradesh and on to Orissa. We have listened to farmers' stories, spoken to researchers, attended conferences and doing research to look for answers to our questions. What are the biggest challenges for agriculture in regards to climate change? How can these challenges be approached in a sustainable way? And what about this miracle crop everyone keeps talking about? Yes, in the last uh, 10 years we are, where we are closely observing, one is uh, though the total rainfall is remaining same, the distribution of rainfall has changed a lot. So we are in seeing increasing dry spells and at the same time we are also seeing uh, increasing downpours. Say in a day more rain comes in, uh, which is again not useful for the plants uh, or the crops. And uh, at the same time we are also seeing uh, there is an increasing dry spell which is also creating the problem. Both are equally problematic. Today, climatic conditions are changing abruptly. By the end of 2015, more than half of the districts in Telangana were classified as affected by drought, and the agriculture is getting more and more dependent on irrigation systems. According to the IPCC panel and the World Bank, there's a high probability that India will experience even more severe changes in the rain and monsoon patterns in the near future. An abrupt change in the monsoon could precipitate a major crisis, triggering more frequent droughts as well as greater flooding in larger parts of India. The rainfall, it is losing its harmonity. Sometimes we are getting heavy rain and sometimes long dry spells. You know, every 15 days we used to get rain, a kind of a harmonious rain. That is declining. So because of this long dry spells, the stunted growth and sometimes even the crop is dying. We have to thoroughly, we have to educate the farmer, the present changing agriculture system. Even the farmer has to uh, coping mechanism with the climate change. If the climate change is, it is a reality. So we have to adopt according to that. Mr. Nimaya is the director of the organization Peace, a member of the Mini Network operating in the state of Telangana. Measurements from the end of 2015 show that Telangana received 634 mm rainfall against a normal of 814 mm, a 22% deficit. 
Here in the village Kandakunta, we got the chance to meet a group of farmers who have suffered from the severe drought this year. Normally, the farmers get yields from up to 10 different crops. This year, however, only the millet type sorghum produced any yield. The rest of the harvest was lost. <laughs> The farmers we've met in Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and Orissa all tell us similar stories about tougher weather conditions. In Orissa, this year's drought has been the worst for decades and the farmers are worried about the future. Here in the Kondor tribe in the village of Ungamaha, the whole rice harvest was lost due to the drought this year. The only crop that survived was the highly nutritious millet crop, one of the most favorable staple foods of tribals. Other tribes in the same area tell us similar stories. The people here in the Fanga tribe described how they have converted to millet-based organic farming and in spite of the extreme drought this year, the millet harvest was not affected. Millets, it requires very less water consumption. So in, um, under present situation, climate, uh, with the climate change, we, uh, we, we don't have a huge rainfall. Often water is uh, very deficit. Under these circumstances, it is uh, better to have less water consumption crops like millets. So in earlier days, uh, millets used to be the major staple food for the, most of the people. But, uh, but day by day, the paddy is occupying the area which requires more of water. So instead of going for such a high water requirement of paddy crop, if you go for millets crop, we can, have, we can solve this problem of water shortage. The majority of millets is grown organically in India today. Organic methods imply use of biopesticides and natural fertilizers, as well as multi-cropping systems. The conventional methods, which dominates the agriculture today, were introduced during the Green Revolution beginning in the 1960s. The agriculture went from small scale, with a number of different crops grown on the fields, to massive acres devoted for one single crop. Chemical pesticides, fertilizers and market seeds also poked the interest of small-scale farmers and much of the traditional mixed crop fields were lost. However, today many farmers are realizing the benefits of multi-cropping systems. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Monoculture is a problem, so if you have one crop, uh, anything, so it will be uh, highly susceptible for failure. So if you have multiple cropping systems, so move into, don't put all your eggs in one basket, so change your cropping pattern so that you will have multiple cropping systems is one, one factor which we are looking at so that different duration crops would be there so that if even if one crop fails, there is other crop different root uh, crops of different nature so that uh, the impact of weather on each of the crop varies so that's one thing we are trying to look at everyone we've talked to is head over heels about millets but we can't help but wonder are there really no negative aspects so absolutely not uh, but the thing is, it will give relatively less yields and it's less uh, attractive as compared to rice and maize. The main argument for conventional agriculture is its ability to produce higher yield unaffected by pests and diseases. But with the growing climate challenges, will this really be applicable in the future? The modern agriculture 
the chemical agriculture he will not survive the the wish and will willness of the farmers because it will affect by drought it will affect by floods it will affect by nature but whereas millets will give a minimum production for every farmer in in every se for any uneven season any bad condition millets will give a minimum survive minimum survival for the farmer so that's why millets are the only good for food sovereignty organic agriculture no doubt we have to encourage in terms of health point of view and the safety of the environment Uh, but at the same time unless we go in a phased manner uh, drastic uh, conversion to organic is uh, cannot uh, feed the population at a time so keeping in view of both uh, soil health point of view environmental safety and our health point of view at the same time not at the cost of the production we have to feed the peop- uh, people so if we if we want to justify all the things uh, we have to do organic farming in a slow, in a phased manner Food production needs to be based on keeping soils, ecosystems and people healthy. But still, we will need food and lots of it. Increased production is often cited as the main requirement for feeding a growing, changing world. But there are additional aspects to the issue. We say that it is not how much yield per acre that you are producing. How much nutrition per acre that you are producing should be the new criteria so yeah, in that the conventional agriculture always uh, loses in the sense that they may produce let's say about 200 300 kilos more than an organic farmer but then the quality of the food that they are producing is so abysmal that it doesn't match anywhere the organic quality focusing on the net yield is clearly not enough when we talk about food production Nutrition is one aspect to consider. Climate change is another. Millets are small crops. They can actually, they may not give higher yields. They are not so actually attracted to crops like uh, cereals and other crops, uh, commercial crops. But they are very small crop, very simple crop. But they can grow in both extremities like high temperatures as well as low temperatures as well as uh, less rainfall and more rainfall. Here at the Agricultural Research Station in Vishyanagaram in Andhra Pradesh, there is ongoing research for developing resistant and high-yielding varieties of millets. Ms. Niraja and Ms. Gitanjali told us about the laboratory work going on to develop tolerant and productive crop varieties. We cannot close the doors on technology. Like closing doors on technology is a recipe for disaster. So we have to go for the biotechnological tools for actually to face the coming of challenges. The feeding of the teemingly growing population is a challenging task to our scientists. So the best way is to go for the biotechnological tools and we have to really have to adopt. Whether you like it or not, we have to adapt and simply we cannot shut the doors on technology. On national level, these types of initiatives are encouraged. However, the governmental INSIMP program, Initiative for Nutritional Security through Intense Millet Promotion, launched in 2011, has been criticized for promoting conventional methods. So our uh, criticism of INSIMP as it existed was that it, it, it works towards input subsidy, that is the hybrid and high yielding varieties of seeds that the government labs have produced and uh, for manure, for chemical fertilizers and therefore it leaves very little choice to the people themselves what kind of agriculture they want to pursue in millets and what kind of uh, mechanism that they would like to use. So this goes against the complete concept of millet farming as we understand it. There is a clear conflict of interest and a disagreement in how to tackle the issue of food production along with environmental aspects. On international level, there's been a long debate about these issues. At the Paris Climate Summit in December of 2015, the 4 per mil initiative Soil for Food Security and Climate was launched. 
This voluntary action plan aims to synergize several already existing agricultural and environmental policies and promote mitigation of climate change through soil management. 24% of global soils are degraded at various levels, including 50% of agricultural soils. Agriculture and soil experts from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, are stating that excessive use of chemical fertilizers is one of the major reasons for soil degradation. <laughs> The soils are becoming sodic, alkaline, and also uh, maybe in the beginning it was so much increasing, but gradually the soil fertility is declining. Uh, the microbials are disappearing in the soil. Maintaining organic carbon-rich soil and restoring and improving degraded agricultural lands play an important role in addressing the challenges of food security and climate change. By increasing organic matter in the soil, crop production could grow substantially and over a billion ton of carbon could be stocked in the soils every year, reducing the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Sustainable agriculture means we have to sustain both soil as well as crop productivity. So we have to use natural resources judiciously and we have to uh, maintain the productivity, fertility and productivity of the soil through, uh, through soil, better soil management practices rather than just exploiting the natural resources of the soil. After our months here in India, talking to all these people and standing eye to eye with the reality of farmers. It's clear to us that today's conventional agricultural methods are not sustainable. The fall of 2015 was characterized by extreme drought in central and eastern India, along with excessive flooding in the southern states. These are indications of that climate change is a reality. From our experience, Organic agricultural systems based on climate-smart crops, such as millets, can offer a solution to food security in India in the future. Local initiatives, such as the work of DDS, along with international action plans, could be a driving force for such a transition. It is clear that climate change can harm agriculture severely at the same time as agriculture could help mitigate these changes. This should be a center point in the discussion about food sovereignty and climate change. So what about the future for organic agriculture? Is it possible to feed a growing population simply using organic methods? Our journey has given us several different answers. Here's one. I actually put the question the other way around. Uh, feeding the growing population is possible only with organic growing conditions. Because the more you depend on uh, the inorganic sources of energy and nutrition, uh, you run out of your fossil fuels. So you are already running out. So in the next 30 years, where are your phosphorus going to come from? Where are your potassium going to come from? Uh, where is your nitrogen going to come from? So unless you shift towards more towards ecological farming systems, you are not going to feed your population. So you can't make it synthetically. <laughs>